All right. Uh, hey, everybody. Um, welcome to our KubeCon talk. Um, today, we want to talk about Comprof uh, profiling in the cloud native era. And actually, we don't want to talk about Comprof, but more specifically about Paka, which is the next version of Comprof. Um, I'm Matthias Lorbe. I'm a senior software engineer at Polar Signals. Uh, next to maintaining Paka, I also uh, work on Thanos. Uh, the Prometheus operator, and recently started uh, hacking on Pura, which is an uh, SLO management tool for Prometheus. And with me today is Kemal. Yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Kemal Gavkovin. Uh, I'm a senior software engineer at Polar Signals as well. I just recently joined. Previously, I was working for Red Hat. Uh, besides working on cool things in Polar Signals, I'm also a maintainer of Thanos project, uh, Prometheus Client Go and Cube Prometheus and now Parka. So today uh, we are going to talk about continuous profiling, but before that we need to just uh, do some groundwork and talk about profiling. Profiling itself has all this programming and the, according to our research, we could, uh, we could uh, see some academic papers dated back in the 1970s. So what is profiling? So, Profiling is a form of a dynamic pro uh, program analysis where you get the measurements about space and time complexity and the usage of in instructions and their frequency and duration uh, overall. So why do we use this profiling and what can we do with these profiles? We can actually uh, check out the CPUs and uh, from the CPUs, we can uh, determine uh, where an actual program is spending its much of its time, or uh, how it uses memory, like what is allocating, and uh, how many times it's allocated, whatnot. So today, we actually uh, focus on the sampling profilers, and uh, because uh, it's more feasible to build upon. Uh, the processes that we have today. So how it works is it's actually, let's say we want to profile a process for 10 seconds, we collect and aggregate all of the data, and then periodically we just collect this data from that process, it's, uh, process. And this, since uh, the sample snapshots, uh, like uh, that net, not that infrequent, uh, not frequent uh, for the CPUs, this has really low overhead. To check this data, there is also a nice paper from Google you can uh, check out in the link. So today we're going to specifically talk about uh, a little bit about pprof. Uh, pprof itself is a profiler. It uh, has like cross-language support and that's why we kind of uh, picked that. So pprof is uh, a tool from uh, Google and it actually specifies an open format in form of protobuf. Uh, and it's like uh, reads a collection of profiles from the processes. It can either use an HTTP endpoint or it can, it can use a local file uh, in formatted in uh, protocol. Uh, and this tool is also using uh, dot visualizations, using graphics. Uh, you, it can e e actually visualize. Uh, I'm sure like you have seen a couple of demos uh, how you can use the people. Pprof has a lot, uh, a lot of language supports. Some of uh, language uh, supports already, and some of them is like really good, uh, like Go because it's also from Google, and some of uh, them is just really getting there. But since uh, Pprof is an open format, uh, and you can actually just like any language runtime can actually support this. So let's dive into code and see these things in action. On the left, you see a code piece. Uh, it's just doing some iterations and it's doing some function calls. And when this program is running, uh, we are like doing a sampling profiling. And from the samples, we kind of end up uh, something like in the right. We, this format in the right is called folded stack trace. It's by, uh, from a brand new graph. It's super uh, easy to uh, understand because it's just simple. It's rep uh, it's a, it represents a uh, stack calls, and then uh, whenever you see that stack, you just uh, put an entry in there, and just you can just count them all. Uh, but it's like a lot of redundant information. Uh, that same folded stack trace can be interpreted in the uh, pprof format 
as aggregation of the locations and how many times we actually seen that step trace. Uh, it to, um, in order to understand this P uh, format more in depth, you can actually check out uh, a blog post from uh, Matthias, uh, which is already in the uh, Polar Signals blog. Uh, you can add the link uh, inside the slide. So we already talked about PProf can actually uh, fetch the profiles using an HTTP endpoint. You can in this slide you can see uh, how you can actually instrument your application to actually expose that profiling endpoints. It is super simple for Go itself. Uh, it's already built in the uh, runtime uh, standard library. You can just like get the uh, net HTTP PProf library and you can just register those handlers and you already have those endpoints exposed from your process. Uh, same goes for, for example, another uh, popular language, JavaScript. It's also like super easy convenient to add uh, with the libraries. You just like register an endpoint and uh, like PProf can collect that profiles and then actually it can also serve that profiles. So profiling is can be an really, really incredible tool because we can just like trace anything, any resource usages that we have, but it has some problems. One of those problems uh, is it's momentarily, so you can actually just try to fetch a profile for that point in time and whatever you have uh, for in the memory or in the call stack, you can just get that. In order to do that, you need to do this like manual. So it's a manual process. You need to have uh, something to actually fetch that uh, from the uh, exposed endpoints. For because of those reasons, like there are a lot of homebrew uh, workflows, and it's not like actually automated, or there are some scripts laying around uh, specific to your organization, and you just like use that. So. In order to fix those things, um, which is the actual topic of our uh, talk, is continuous profiling. Yeah, and uh, continuous profiling is the foundation for what we're doing, obviously. Um, and why is it important? Um, just to give you another example, um, we, we might see a, a process run and then uh, looking at its memory, all of a sudden there's this drop. right? And if you've seen it, you know, this is like an infamous umkill. Uh, but what happened there, we don't know. So um, what we would really love is we want to use pprof to create the, uh, the profile samples. We want to sample every so often. We want to do it with little, uh, little overhead due to the sampling, as Kamal explained. And then additionally, we hope to now get the profiles right before these umkills happen. Um, and all of that should be done automatically rather than by hand. We don't want the manual toil. Um, so yeah, enter continuous profiling. Again, just visualizing, we want to do this like over time. Um, we want to collect like heap profiles and allocation of profiles, but also um, slightly more infrequent the CPO profiles. So we could now pick any of these profiles uh, at any given uh, point in time and um, yeah, just like look at what was going on. So sampling is cheap. Again, uh, there is not much overhead. Um, and then by storing that, we can add some more uh, index data, um, some more uh, metadata, uh, for example, the container identity, so we can um, see where and which data center the profile came from or which container, etc. And then we can use a query language similar to PromQL, like Prometheus has it, to then fetch the, the, uh, the profiles that we are really interested in. And that's why we built Parker, or even before that, um, Conprof. But yeah, again, Parker is the next uh, version of, of Conprof. Um, and yeah, Kamal is going to yeah. talk you through that. Parker is a new open source project. It's a continuation of Conprof, as Matthias already mentioned. It's a mutual, it has a mutual government organization model and like since we just recently built that, uh, we're still uh, waiting for the contributions. So if you're into this or check it out and uh, please, contributions are welcome. Parka itself, heavily inspired by Prometheus, uh, like the, all of us are kind of coming from the Prometheus community. That's why we like uh, carry over a couple of things that work for Prometheus, such as like single statically, statically linked binaries to, to uh, ease up the operational work. 
we carry over the multi-dimensional label model, which you can actually share these labels with as Prometheus, and we can just like scrape and populate all those labels in the park itself as well. It's using the same service discovery, and it has like new cool built-in storage as well. In addition to Parka itself, we also created a new thing called Parka Agent. Uh, this is one of the major differences uh, between the Comprog and Parka. Now the agent is an, uh, proposed another way to discover the workloads in your running system. It's using eBPF and it's kind of uh, try to find off the C groups that is running on your system and from those C groups is try to understand where the CPU and memory or the IO resources are being used. It captures the current stack, uh, traces uh, x many times per second and created an analysis of that. Uh, you don't need to change any code, you just need to drop the park agent in your nodes and then it can start scraping the profiling data and send it over to the Parka uh, backend itself. So, to check out this high-level uh, overview of this profiler, it just like discovers C groups from the target provider. This could be any uh, container runtime, this could be Rucker, uh, Docker or Cryo, and then from that it kind of loads uh, eBPF, a, a little eBPF program per C group and, and start uh, collecting data from that. It reads that data right into the BPF map, and uh, from that BPF map, it transforms data to pro, uh, PPRO format, and then extract the symbol the symbolization information, and then send those data over to server, and then uh, flushes the buffer and uh, starts doing the same thing again. This is a low frequency event, and that's why like it doesn't have a, a lot of overhead for uh, running systems. So do you, if you want to learn more on Parka Agent, there is another talk uh, from Frederick. It's today at 5.25 p.m. And it, he really goes deep into how we actually achieve the collecting data using uh, EVP. So uh, let's uh, actually see Parka in action. So Parka is running uh, in my local machine and scraping itself. There is also Parker Agent running in the same machine and it's just scraping the system, the, the C groups and discovering and uh, sending the data uh, to local Parker. So let's have a look at the allocated space. And in here we can see that over an hour, like how Parker is uh, allocating bytes. So we can pick a profile in nearly an hour ago and we can see that like which function is allocating uh, more bytes or whatnot. But all in all, this uh, single profile doesn't give a lot of information to us. What uh, we can do is we can actually compare the profiles. So let's pick uh, a profile from an hour ago and more recent one. And now we can actually compare these profiles. This is getting a diff of those profiles and it's showing like uh, how much but we are allocating in which function. And the, it's all color coded and the more red indicates it's more bytes actually is allocated. One thing we can also see, uh, check out is the CPU samples from the uh, agent itself. As you can see, uh, agent is scraping the C groups that is running on my local machine. And from that, we can actually pick one of them. Let's say park agent service. And we can see that the profiles that we've uh, scraped from this agent, uh, park agent, and we can actually merge and see what's going on over an hour. And as you can see, this is the uh, actual time spent over this past hour uh, by the park agent itself. Okay, that was a fantastic demo. So let's talk about the storage and what uh, really uh, makes Parka Parka and why we uh, didn't continue with Conprof as a project, right? Um, so previously Conprof itself just got the profiles and took the profiles as they came in individually gzipped and stored them in a slightly modified uh, Prometheus time series database where we could store uh, byte slices and not float64 anymore and that was fine to get like a proof of concept out of the door. Um, but the compression wasn't great 
So during a talk uh, at PromCon earlier this year, I explained how we improved the compression by basically storing the uncompressed uh, uh, profiles and then um, in groups compressing them together, which got us between like 20 and 50% of improvements, but it wasn't that much and it was only like disk uh, usage to begin with and we wanted to improve on um, computation and throughput and everything. So we needed something better still. And that's why we created Parkas TCB and that is written from scratch. So it is still uh, inspired by Prometheus. Um, as Again, the same uh, that was true for the service discovery and the scraper is true for the storage. And it uh, uses a separate meta metadata uh, to store things. It handles stack traces in the storage uh, as a first class citizen and has different chunk encodings for specific various data. Um, and to kind of like walk you through the entire architecture, we're going to look at this uh, step by step. But first of all, what happens when a write request comes in? And that is what uh, Kemal is going to talk you through. Yes. So right now, Parker can discover profiles either by like, scraping or it can receive a write request from an agent and it can just like ingest that data. So let's see how uh, like how a life cycle of a write request looks like, right? A write request is represented as protobuf as you've seen in the screen, and we have the role profile that generated by pprof, and it, uh, we attach the metadata, metadata label set from the service discovery we have already built in uh, Parker itself. From that, we get the role profile, and we just like using pprof itself uh, parse and validate that data. From that data, we start building a memory representation of that in Parker itself. So the profile struct or profile in the memory looks like this. The, in this format, the samples mapping and location and functions are the relevant things that uh, we are actually looking for. So Using that data schema, when we got the actual data in it, it looks like this. We have a sample value and attached metadata information in it. From that data, we built a model in the memory uh, and we ingest the metadata in our uh, freshly built metastore. And by doing so, we uh, eliminate the redundant information, redundant meta information that we have in the profiles. Right now, uh, this metadata store is implemented uh, in SQLite and in memory SQLite that, that is used in the static binary, but it's compatible to be uh, work with any SQL databases. So after we scrape that metadata uh, from this uh, PPROF profile, we ended up with a bunch of location IDs and corresponding sample values to that location IDs. But as you can see, those location IDs actually build a tree. That's actually what we do. And we build a tree out of those location IDs and we uh, store those uh, sampled values as nodes in the tree. And this is how we actually store uh, the data in, this, uh, in the packet storage. Exactly, okay. So how do we actually append uh, those profile trees um, into, into the Parker TSDB. And first of all, we do that by creating an appender based on the label set. And that label set gives us a specific series um, or creates it if it didn't exist yet. And once we got that appender, we can then uh, give that appender the profile um, to, to do its magic. Um, before we actually append any of the tree and any of the values themselves, Every profile comes with a timestamp and duration and period, so some metadata, and we also want to store that. Um, the timestamp is uh, really um, what we store once, and then everything else kind of works off of the index of that specific timestamp. Um, and that is true for the values as well later on. Um, because timestamps are pretty, pretty well uh, monot monotonically increasing, we can uh, use a double delta encoded chunk to store them efficiently and the duration and periods are often pretty repetitive so we can use 
run length uh, encoding for those to, to really uh, store as, le uh, as little data as we have to. Okay, cool. Now that we've uh, taken care of storing uh, or creating and getting the series and then storing the timestamp duration and, and periods, what are we actually doing with the profile tree with the individual stack traces and how do we store them over time, right? So as Kamal said earlier, we do get this profile tree with the stack trace and, and the corresponding values. And we take those um, as a struct and those, uh, those profile trees have a root and the root itself has a location ID, flat values and cumulative values. And then um, those flat values and cumulative values are tree value nodes uh, with a specific value and the key, which I, uh, uniquely identifies uh, again uh, with the location ID, but also the uh, labels, which can differ um, what this value belongs to really. Um, and we can use those um, to then um, walk, walk the tree and um, ingest uh, the values um, like so. Um, we basically walk the tree and then we see for every location key that we see, we store, for example, for the zeroth uh, key, which is always the root, we store um, the cumulative value 46. And then we walk the tree with a stack and, and store the other values. I'm only looking at the cumulative values, the flat values are kind of ignored, but it's the same for them as well. Next scrape, another profile tree gets created and we want to append that. So again, we get the same, in this case, the same profile tree and we just take a look at the individual keys and append to those chunks the uh, values. Now it gets a bit uh, more interesting. We actually get a profile tree where one node is missing. So we append all the, the values um, to the keys that we've seen and we really just uh, ignore uh, appending the, uh, the anything to, to the key that uh, didn't exist. Um, and again, another edge case or another use case is we see another stack trace that didn't show up earlier. And because remember, we only stored the timestamps once, we need to work off of the index for uh, duration periods, but also all these values. We can't just like store um, them, uh, the timestamps and the values together, but we need to work off of the index. So we need to ingest the 11 here to the uh, third index. Um, and we do that by just appending three zeros and then appending it um, right there, uh, the index three. Now you might think, might be thinking, well, if we're going to read back this, um, what about the, um, the missing values right there? And that is called sparseness. We actually don't store anything for those nodes. Um, but when reading back, we pretend that they were zero and these zeros are basically ignored by, by pprof. They are uh, not doing anything. So we, we pretend that they were zero and then pprof ignores them. So that is how we can even, just by seeing stack traces every now and then, we can still be smart about storing them. So to recap, um, the profile store itself works on top of the standard pprof and it creates like this more um, efficient representation. It stores all the metadata uniquely in the SQLite database right now. And then we append this to a TSDB, which is still a lot like Prometheus, but it works on top of the profile tree. And then every chunk for the different types of, of values um, also works just like Prometheus. Okay, cool. Now that we've seen how to store profiles in Parker's TSDB, how do we actually query things? Uh, again, we do use gRPC and we can send a query request. Next to the mode, which specifies if we want a single uh, profile or a diff or a merge type, um, we do need to give it a single profile in our case, which we are interested in. And the single profile, uh, which you can see at the very bottom, uh, takes a time uh, as a timestamp and a query. So what does it look like? The time is actually just a Unix timestamp and the query is just like, you know, from Prometheus, almost like a PromQL query, where you give some label matches and that will match all the series that, uh, that you're looking for. And then in memory, the TSDB um, is uh, creating a wrapper, the querier, that um, will um, look 
five minutes earlier from the timestamp you want and five minutes later and then we'll select all the series based on the selector um, that, that you've given and then we'll, in the first for loop it will iterate over all the series that were matched and then in the second for loop we will iterate over every series this timestamp until we find a timestamp that is equal or higher than the requested timestamp and once we hit that condition we can immediately return um, the profile. Now the Parker uh, TSDB uh, has been so much more efficient because we don't store the metadata anymore um, next to all the, the, the actual values. And because of that diffing, so that is like taking two profiles and um, subtracting the values, uh, has become basically just math. And then once we get the results of that, uh, um, with the location IDs, we can symbolize them and then build what you see uh, in Parker. Um, and the same is true for a merging, which is basically taking two or multiple profiles and then um, adding every, uh, adding all the values. And that has become also just take all the chunks that are uh, falling into that time frame and then summing up everything, returning that, symbolizing it, and there you have your profile. And that has really sped up everything. Um, and the entire reason why we built uh, Parker TSDB has proven to be exactly um, valuable for that reason. Okay, now that we've talked all about uh, the Parker TSDB, what's on the roadmap for Parker? Uh, we want to have persistence on disk. We want to be able to persist the data that we have. Um, we want to improve querying. We want to be able to, for example, only query sub-stack traces uh, where we ignore everything else uh, in the tree. And then once we've done all the math, we can return that, symbolize it, and show it. That would be fantastic. Additionally, we can still improve the symbolization. There's lots of work to be done in the meta store. Uh, the SQL um, parts are, are also still uh, ready for improvements. Um, but most importantly, we want really you to get involved with uh, Parker and the community um, for you to try um, Parker, open issues, open pull requests, just contribute. And we would really love to create a community about performance like-minded people um, based on Parker. That would be fantastic. So thank you. And if you have questions, feel free to ask them. And we are also hiring. Thanks and take care.